Welcome to renovating a vintage Stuart 10H engine, part one. Cleaning the engine to remove years of oil and grime, examining the governor to find out why it does not spin. The problem was a simple one and soon put right. I show the process in detail, followed by testing the boiler feed pump. This is a very well built example of a vintage Stuart 10H. If you build one these days, it won't look like this because the castings are entirely different. And the modern castings do not fit on this engine as I found out when I bought a modern steam chest cover casting. This engine runs very well, but the governor mechanism doesn't work. Everything appears to rotate okay, but it's a bit notchy and doesn't feel good. I think first of all, I'll clean some of the filth off the engine. It's fairly dirty because it's not new, it's very old. I had thought about putting the entire engine in my ultrasonic cleaner, but I'm a bit concerned that the paint may disappear. I would like to retain the existing patina or patina, whichever way you pronounce it. But it still needs a clean. I'm using a toothbrush to get into some of the more inaccessible areas. And I'm using a small piece of 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper to clean up the crank web, mainly because it was rusty. I'm also cleaning the spokes of the flywheel using the toothbrush. And while I was working in this area, I thought it was a good idea to remove the drive belt for the governor. I'll clean up the outer part of the flywheel with the engine running later on in the episode. I really am being very careful not to remove any of the existing paint. It's not perfect, but it looks good. This is only the initial cleaning, I'll give it a deeper clean later on in the series. So what's going on with the governor, why doesn't it spin? Well, it's all down to this bracket. It's supposed to be perfectly level, but it tips down a little bit, so things are out of line. I levered the bracket to lift it slightly, but I went too far, so I tapped it back a little bit. I think it's about right now, but there is another problem. The shaft that drives the governor Here the drive belt and the gears appears to be bent. How do I know this? Well, as I rotate it, it feels very notchy. I carefully untightened the grub screw that secures the gear to the shaft and withdrew the shaft and pulley assembly altogether. This is a good time to show how well this engine's made. Look at the quality of the fittings. I'm going to straighten the shaft in the lathe. First of all, I spin it up in the chuck to see how bent it is. When I rotate the part in the chuck, you can see that it's far from true. This is running in slow motion to make it more obvious. I could make a new part very easily, but that's not the point. This is not a rebuild, it's a restoration. What you are about to see requires some practice. Have a few goes with a random piece of bent bar first before working on the engine part. This process owes more to feel than engineering. I spin the part in the chuck and very gently tap it with a hammer. And eventually, as if by magic, the part spins true. I turn it around in the chuck and cleaned the shaft, just to reduce its diameter fractionally. Then I took the shaft out of the lathe chuck and put it in my Proxon motor tool, which is bench mounted. As you can see, I'm using a needle file to clean up the area around the pulley. I do need to do something about the groove though. When I reassemble the governor drive, it still doesn't work, and this is mainly due to the fact that, after quite a few years of running, the pulley itself is extremely smooth, and the drive belt is quite oily. I need to do something about this. First of all, I'm checking the mesh of the gears to make sure they're not too tight. I've increased the clearance of the meshing of the gears, and this has improved things, but it still doesn't run. It's time to apply some science. I'm going to roughen up the groove in the pulley. And for this, I'm using a very aggressive burr, so I'm being really careful for two reasons. One is my hands are close to it, and also I don't want to damage the outer part of the pulley. Something at some stage in its life has put pressure on the governor and bent this bracket. I carefully tweaked this for a second time, then everything was back in line. And as you can see, the governor is working perfectly now, and it doesn't just work at high speed, it will work at slow speeds too. I thought it was a good idea to run the engine to bed in the governor. The mounting bracket is square, 
The pulley and drive shaft is running true and it's been driven with more power because the inside of the groove in the pulley is a bit rougher than it was. I'm lubricating the area with some WD-40 and I've also fitted the lever that is moved by the governor which in turn, by using a couple of levers that are currently not fitted, will turn the shaft in the regulator, which will, in theory, control the speed of the engine. But unfortunately, in these small engines, I don't find them to be very effective. What I'm doing at the moment, with the engine running on compressed air, is cleaning the edges of the flywheel. I'm not polishing it, I don't want it to be shiny. I just need the outer edges of the flywheel to be evenly clean and devoid of any rust staining. As you can clearly see I'm using a piece of wet or dry sandpaper and I'm using it wet but not with water, I'm using WD-40. And once I wipe off the residue the flywheel now looks quite good. This old 10H is fitted with a crankshaft driven water pump. This feeds water into the boiler. It will need a bypass valve fitting. More about that when I build the steam plant. In an earlier episode when I ran this engine I heard a click as the bore valves both freed inside the pump. So I'm assuming that it's going to work and I assume correctly when I connect piping to it it pumps beautifully. It also pumps under pressure. The bore of this piping is too big and it took a while before water appeared at the end of it but once the water appeared, it stayed there. And there was a steady flow of water from the pump back into the food container. And that is it for this episode. As always, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.